Okay. All right, folks. Um, welcome back. We're talking about chemical formulas. We've looked at formula mass and percent composition. Uh, the next piece is to take a look at what are called mole conversions and the mole itself. The mole is a way of measuring mass by the number of particles present, whether they're atoms or molecules or formula units with an ionic compound. Okay. Um, one mole equals these things, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. That's Avogadro's number. Okay. It's a big number, truly immense, 6, 0, 2, 21 zeros, and then your decimal point. One mole is also the formula mass of a compound in grams. So water, for instance, and this is about one mole of water, water's formula mass is 18.02 grams per mole. So in this much water, there are this many water molecules. Okay, That seems crazy, but you know because molecules are so small, this many of them doesn't actually take up that much space. One mole of water, only about 18 grams, okay? This bag of sugar has about 13 moles of sugar in it, okay? It's about four kilograms. One mole of sugar is about, table sugar that is, is about 320 grams in mass. So that's the sugar, okay? So one mole is these things. Also, if you're dealing with a gas, one mole of any gas in normal conditions is 22.4 liters. And it doesn't even matter what the molecule is. If it's one mole, it has this volume in normal conditions. STP, standard temperature and pressure, which is about the conditions at room temperature, okay? Roughly speaking. So that's the mole. Now, the reason we use the mole, the reason it's important, is that when you want to know what's going to happen in a chemical reaction, if you want to make an accurate numerical quantitative prediction, you need to know the moles of chemical that you're dealing with. Okay, Because when atoms react with each other, they don't react as part or half atoms. They react as whole atoms or whole molecules. And the mole gives us a way to measure that. Okay. And because molecules and atoms are different sizes, um, like a, a sucrose molecule in sugar is much larger than a water molecule, we have to use the mole in order to get you know, the number of particles, not just their mass. Okay? And we can use that then to make very accurate predictions about what's going to come out of a chemical reaction. So that's the mole. Moving on, we're going to deal with the mole roadmap today. And this is a way to help convert to and from moles. And you're going to work on this, doing some problems where you convert to moles and from moles, etc. Okay. Um, the way this works here, um, there we go. Do, 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 do. Good. The way this works is that you simply follow the arrows. You determine where you're starting at, and you follow the arrows to where you're going to. So let's say I said, okay, we got 50 grams of a compound. How many moles is that? Well, the arrow here is here to go from grams to moles. Divide by formula mass. So whatever your gram mass is that you're starting with, you would divide it by the formula mass of the compound, and that's going to tell you how many moles are present. That's how you use the mole roadmap. This roadmap will be included in the, in the lesson in Google Classroom. You should refer to it as you work through this lesson. At this point, I'd like you to get a piece of paper, if possible, a calculator, and your periodic table. And we're going to take a few moments to work through some mole conversion problems. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so the first example, and we have six. There we are. First example, we have two grams of iron. How many moles would that be? So mole roadmap, as you can see here, divide by formula mass. We're starting in grams, and if you look in the upper right there, opposite my face, my face, and up there is your mole roadmap. Okay. 
Um, we're starting in grams, two grams of iron, and we want to make it moles. So follow the arrow, divide by formula mass. Now for iron, its average atomic mass is its formula mass. Okay, um, So you would set it up like this. I set it up as a factor label problem, so you can see how units cancel out. One mole of iron is 55.85 grams of iron. Grams cancel out, and you're left with moles of iron as your units. Okay, So you're dividing two by the formula mass of iron. Take a moment and calculate and see what you get. Okay, did you get a small number? Good. Um, and if you didn't, try it again. Your answer, 0.036 moles of iron. So two grams is that many moles of iron. Okay. Let's do another one. 80 liters of hydrogen gas, H2. How many moles? So mole roadmap, we're in liters of gas. Now, this section of the mole roadmap, you may only use if the chemical is in the gas phase. If it's not a gas, can't do it, okay? This is a gas, so we're good. So 80 liters, how many moles, follow the arrow, divide 80 by 22.4, okay? So, um, because one mole of gas, one mole of hydrogen, is 22.4 liters. So you set it up like that, and again, I did it factor label style, so you can see how units Cancel out. 80 divided by 22.4. Try that now. I'll give you a moment. Okay. What did you get? Should be 3.6 moles of hydrogen. Got That's your amount. Which is only about 7 grams of hydrogen. Not much. Sorry. Um, not much. However, uh, it is a gas. Remember that gases are not very dense. So there it is. Um, by the way, 22.4 liters is about the size of your average beach ball, just so you know. Let's look at some more. 4.3 moles of copper. How many atoms of copper? Oh, look at that. The answer is already given there. Let me point correctly. There it is. Um, so to show you the setup here, moles of copper... We want to know how many atoms of copper. So moles to atoms multiply by Avogadro's number. Okay. So the setup looks like this. 4.3 multiplied by Avogadro's number. And be sure that you enter scientific notation correctly. Okay. And when you do, you get 2.6 times 10 to the 24th atoms of copper. Okay. Let's try a few more. 80 grams of copper sulfate. How many particles? Okay. I don't see molecules here because it's an ionic compound, and technically we call it a formula unit. Okay. So this is a two-step problem. Okay. We're starting in grams, and we're ending in atoms or molecules, particles. So first step, grams to moles divided by formula mass. Okay. Um, Take a moment and calculate the formula mass of copper sulfate. One copper, one sulfur, four oxygen. Okay, so the first part looks like this. Formula mass of copper sulfate, 159.61. That's one mole of copper sulfate. Next step then is to multiply whatever that number is, and that's about half a mole, 0.5, you would multiply by Avogadro's number. The setup looks like this. Okay. Take a moment then and see if you can determine a final answer. So you should have gotten six point, or I'm sorry, three point oh two times ten to the twenty third particles of copper sulfate, which is about half of Avogadro's number, and we're dealing here with about half a mole. Okay. All right, a couple more here. Oh, look at that. Answer is also given. All right, let me walk you through this one. 
2 times 10 to the 30th atoms of lithium, how many grams of lithium would that be? So we're in atoms, and we're going to grams of lithium. First step, divide by Avogadro's number. That should look like this. Two, two to, I'm sorry, 2 times 10 to the 30th divided by Avogadro's number. Okay. Um, next step then, going from moles to grams, you would multiply by formula mass. So whatever number you get here in the first part, let me point there, oh, there it is, that first part, whatever you get, you would then multiply by 6.94 grams. And your answer comes out to 2.3 times 10 to the seventh grams of lithium, which is 23 million grams, or roughly 23,000 kilograms, which is roughly 10, actually, would be about 10 tons, roughly. It's a lot of lithium. Okay. Um, last one here. We have this many atoms of xenon. How many liters would that be? Okay, 3 times 10 to the 21st. So we're in atoms or molecules, and we want to know liters of gas. Okay, um, Xenon's a noble gas. It's a gas in normal conditions, so we can convert to liters. So your first step, you divide by Avogadro's number, and it looks like this. Okay, And then whatever you get when you do that, you would then multiply that amount by 22.4 liters, and that looks like this, okay? When you do that, your answer is 0.11 liters of xenon gas, about a tenth of a liter, um, which would be 110 milliliters, roughly. So, so there it is. Those are mole problems, and the idea here is that you're converting to and from the mole as a measurement of mass. Okay. So what you're going to work on next are some practice problems, which are part of this lesson as a Google Doc, and when you're finished, be sure to submit them. All right, thanks everybody, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. All right, take care everybody.